Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at congruent triangle proofs but ones that have quadrilaterals involved in them. So sometimes quadrilaterals are incorporated into a typical triangle congruency proof. These proofs basically require us to use the properties of quadrilaterals to help prove whatever the desired outcome is. So first let's recap um, a standard triangle congruency proof and what those steps are. So I've listed them here. First, we always start by writing out whatever our given statements are. Then we look and say, can we elaborate upon them? Are there any keywords or symbols in the givens that we could now talk a little bit more about? We can look to see if the reflexive property can be used. That's any time the triangle share a side or angle. We're going to look for vertical angles. Those are angles that are congruent and formed by intersecting lines. Finally, we would prove the triangle is congruent and then determine if CPCTC applies. So that's a recap of the basic steps of how to do a congruent triangle proof. But all the proofs we're going to look at in this video are going to relate to quadrilaterals. So parallelograms, rectangles, rhombi, and squares are the most common quadrilaterals seen in proofs. We're going to look at the space below to list the properties of these shapes. And for the sake of the video, I've already gone ahead and filled these in. So some key facts about a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite angles are congruent, the consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals bisect the angles. Over on the right, a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. That means it inherits all of the parallelogram properties, but there's some new properties of a, of a rectangle, which is that the consecutive sides are perpendicular. That's how we get the right angles in the corners, and the diagonals are now congruent. All right, in our bottom row here, a rhombus is a type of parallelogram, so it also holds its properties. In addition, all of the sides of a rhombus are congruent, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect the angles. Last, a square is basically a type of parallelogram, it's a type of rectangle, it's a type of rhombus, so it inherits the properties of all of those. So we're going to look at a couple of proofs in this video, and depending what shape they give us, let's say they give us a parallelogram, we're going to need to use one of these or more, one or more of these parallelogram properties. All right, let's take a look at our first example. And if you need to pause the video to write anything down at any point, of course, feel free to do so. So question one, given rectangle ABCD with diagonal AC is shown, and we're going to prove that triangle ADC and triangle ABC are congruent. So I have already gone ahead and done my first step of writing the given statement. So I set up my two column proof with statement and reason. I wrote my givens and now I'm ready to move on to the next step of a proof. One thing that's also important to note here is that when you're doing proofs with quadrilaterals, it's very common for there to be multiple correct solutions. So I'll just be walking through one in the video, uh, but it is possible that other options exist. All right, so I know that we're working with a rectangle. So I have to think about, well, what facts do I know about a rectangle? And one that I know is that opposite sides are congruent. So that would mean that AD and BC are congruent, and A, B, and C, D are congruent. So I'm going to mark those off in my diagram, and let's write that in here. So I know that A, D is congruent to C, B, and I know that A, B is congruent to C, D. For how we know that, well, let's think about what property we just used. So I'm going to say in a rectangle, the opposite sides... Are congruent. This is an example of us elaborating upon the givens. We looked at the givens for any keywords, in this case rectangle, and we talked more about what it means to be a rectangle. Next we will look at the reflexive property. So both of these triangles share side AC. So I'm going to say that AC is congruent to AC by the reflexive property. and I'm gonna mark that in my picture. When we're looking at this here, the two triangles now have three markings. That means generally I can prove they're congruent. So I'm gonna write my proof statement, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC 
and I have side, side, side congruency here. Other things you could have done in this proof, you could have talked about the right angles instead of the reflexive property that would give you side angle side. That's another option. Um, there's definitely other things you could do, alternate interior angles. I did kind of what I thought was the quickest and most straightforward method for this proof. All right, let's take a look at another. And again, this proof has multiple solutions. I'm going to pick what I feel is the most straightforward one. All right, we're given parallelogram ABCD. Diagonals AC and BD intersect at E. And we want to prove triangle AED and CEB are congruent. So there's a few different triangles in this picture. So let's just take note of the ones that we're trying to prove are congruent to one another. All right, so based on that, I've already gone ahead, wrote my givens in here. Um, I'm going to actually start off using the same fact I did in... Um, the previous question, which is that opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to say that AD is congruent to CB because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. You certainly could mention A, B, and C, D if you wanted, but those are not part of the triangles that I'm trying to prove congruent, so I'm just going to leave that information out. All right, I'm still thinking about this being a parallelogram and what else that means. So one fact that I know about parallelograms, and again, just a reminder, here's your reference here as to what facts you can use. But another fact I know is that the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to write that in here. I'm going to say that A, C and BD bisect each other. And my reason will be in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. Now let's think about that word bisect, right? In a proof, you're always kind of like building off of a previous fact. Bisect means that if a line segment is bisected, it's split into two congruent parts. So for instance, I know that AE is congruent to CE. I also know that DE is congruent to BE. And I'll mark that in my picture. So AE and CE, DE and BE. And the reason behind that is that a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts. And now, pretty similar to the last question, I have three things marked off in each triangle. I can now prove these two triangles are congruent. That's my proof statement here. And it's once again, side, side, side congruency. Other options you could have done here is perhaps not talk about the opposite sides, but do the vertical angles instead um, and maybe have side angle side. You could have talked about some alternate interior angles as well. All right, let's look at one last one here. And this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. I can kind of tell that this is set out to be more difficult because of the way the picture looks. It doesn't just look like a rectangle or a parallelogram, but there's kind of some additions here, um, not just diagonals either. There's extra segments. It looks like two extra triangles kind of hanging at the sides. Um, so we're going to have to really think about what to do on this proof a little bit more. So we know that parallelogram... Uh, or that ABCE is a parallelogram. And we also know that angle AFE is congruent to BDC. So I'm going to mark off those two angles in my picture. And our goal is going to be, yes, we want to do our proof statement, AF is congruent to BD. But we have to first get these triangles to be congruent to one another. So since the proof statement is talking about corresponding parts, of congruent triangles, right? AF is part of that triangle. Then I know that this is going to be a proof that requires CPCTC. But in order to use that, you have to have congruent triangles first. All right, so let's talk about how we can figure out that these two triangles are congruent. I'm going to reuse the same fact we've been using in this video. I'm going to say that AE is congruent to BC. BC. 
because the opposite sides in a parallelogram are congruent. And if you're a little stuck, like looking at the picture and identifying the parallelogram, grab a highlighter. Remember, it says the parallelogram is A, B, C, E. And now you can see that A, E, and B, C are the opposite sides, and therefore they're congruent. And I'm going to put tick marks on them. So actually, our proof is looking pretty good so far because those two triangles already have two markings. We just have to find a way to get a third piece to be congruent so that we can pick one of our triangle congruency methods. So I have nothing to elaborate upon here, again, besides that there's a parallelogram. So I'm going to think about other facts of a parallelogram. Well, I know in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, and we talked about that, but the opposite sides are also parallel. So I'm going to write that for line three. I'm going to say that AE is parallel to BC. And my reason is going to be the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. And we'll talk about how this is going to help us in a second. So when you have parallel lines, often in proofs, that would indicate alternate interior angles. That's the most common scenario. Um, but there's another one that definitely shows up, which is called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are two angles that are formed by parallel lines in a transversal, and they're congruent to one another. They're in the same location. So I'm going to just zoom in for a second here and draw you an example so you can see what I'm referring to. Let's say I have two parallel lines. And let's say I have a transversal. This angle and this angle are going to be congruent to one another because they're corresponding. They're both in the same like little location in their set. So like if I look, here's four angles, here's four angles. Those are both in like the top left. So I actually have corresponding angles in this diagram here. Angle A, E, F and angle B, C, D are corresponding angles because here's our parallel lines, A, E, and B, C. We just said that. And then F, C is our transversal cutting through it. So let's write about these corresponding angles. So I'm going to say that um, angle A, E, F and angle B, C, D are corresponding angles. And the reason I know that is because parallel lines, this is why we had to establish lines were parallel, by the way. Parallel lines cut by a transversal form corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles are always congruent, so I'm going to add an additional line in here talking about that. I'm going to say those two angles are congruent because corresponding angles are congruent. So now we have successfully marked off three pieces of each triangle. I'm going to go back to my picture for a second. I'm going to eliminate some of this pink highlighter. And now you can see in our two triangles, there are three markings. That gives us enough information to prove the triangles are congruent. So I'm going to say for line six, triangle AEF is congruent to triangle BCD. And in this case, that's by angle, angle, side congruency. And now finally, I can do my proof statement. If I have congruent triangles, all of their corresponding pieces are now congruent. So I can say that segment AF is congruent to segment BD by CBCTC, and we have completed this proof. Hopefully in this video, you learned a little bit more about how to take parallelograms, rectangles, and other quadrilaterals from the givens and how to talk about them within a proof.